Yo, yo, yo. It's good, it's good. Brooklyn Boys Radio, we'll be back with another episode. What's poppin', my G? What's good, what's good, man? I'm chillin', man. Back over here with episode, I think it's 34. That's 34 weeks. Yo, you know so crazy? Yeah, I don't think you start the time, but you know what's so crazy mm. about that? I was watching this thing the other day. They said um, most podcasts fail before episode 20. So the fact that we 15 episodes over episode 20, I guess we beat the odds, right? 34 weeks. That's more than half a year. I mean, <clears throat> man, we've been doing this thing for more than six months. That's crazy. I like the dedication, though, man. You know, I'm proud of you, man. Hey, listen, <laughs> I'm here. I'm, here. To, I'm happy to have a partner like you, man. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, God is great. Great is God. Definitely all the time, man. So what else is good, man? I'm, I'm here watching the game at the same time. Like, So if you keep seeing me looking down at my phone, I'm an avid uh, you know, fan of the Knicks and the Lakers, a LeBron fan, and I'll be going back and forth on these games. So I'm going to be doing a show, watching the game, and do it, still do the show at the same time. So don't LeBron mind fan, translation, LeBron D-Rider. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I like LeBron James. He, he said I'm a Lakers fan, then corrected it and said yeah, I'm a LeBron fan. I, yo, I would love, I want Bron to get another chip, man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a Bron fan, but it's, I'm kind of stuck between the rock and the hard place because I gave up on the Knicks a long time ago. Even though the Knicks is my team, they've been disappointing me for years, so I had to find somebody that was winning I could root for. So uh-huh. I didn't want to go to another team, so I just went for another player. LeBron is the player, and now the Knicks got a chance to do something something different so i'm like yo what if these two gotta meet like what i would do you know what i'm saying but you know listen do you man. think this will be the year that they break the curse well they already broke the curse with getting in the second round to me no nigga. you know what i mean by the curse, um bro. You, know, you think they'll take it all the way yeah i don't know is it you know, the nba is, is is a toss-up this year man so much crazy things are happening anything's possible in this year so you know we're gonna see okay 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 and with that said Let's get this show on the road. Yeah. I don't even know where I want to start, too. I'm going back to my notes because I got to go back to the notes and all that and just kind of look at things. I need one of them, like, little fancy computers I'll be seeing, like, Joe Buttons with, and they be having a computer in front of me. Whatnot. I, you know, I think that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. Instead of looking at my phone. It'd be cool as long as it ain't got to come out of my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're going to start it right there. As long as we talk, since we got Joe Buttons, you know, we go to some, uh, some celebrity news this week so i seen that um first i seen cam and mace is like back partners uh back partners in crime they got they uh they uh they sports casting show they don't call it a podcast uh-huh. they call it a sports casting show um it's very funny i forgot the name of the show but it's very funny i enjoy the show i love how they give the commentary because it's just like two regular dudes in the room just giving their commentary like it just be me and you in the room, ain't like you know what I'm saying? They could talk the talk that they really you really can't say on regular ESPN or anything like that. Uh-huh. They use all kind of profanity and stuff. They explain stuff, so I think the show is very funny, and it come from an honest place from the both of them. So I enjoy the show for that reason. Um, I also enjoyed the conversation I seen with Cam. He was explaining with Mace, and he was like, "Yo, you know him and Mace had beef for a long time." Uh-huh. And Mace even did a diss record about him and everything. Uh-huh. But he said it never got physical between the two. And one day he heard Mace on a podcast basically saying, yo, if one thing he he regret, like he wished him and uh, Killer could have fixed their relationship and it would have been different. And he said, I heard him say that and I reached out to him and, you know, we talked about our differences. One thing Mace was saying on the show was that, you know, a lot of people thought he had money. Mm-hmm. I heard that. And he didn't really have the the money. And Cam thought he had some money, and Cam felt like he wasn't doing the right thing. Which is usually the case. And, you know, it's so close to home, because I I see our situation, even with the money and violence situation. And sometimes I think some things are misconstrued, if you go back to that episode, be misconstrued about how things was or how things happened. I see that happens all the time in communication. Sometimes dudes will take the time out to have the communication with each other to explain what's really going on. Yeah, but I, but I also think it, it isn't always about communication because sometimes it's just not your business what that other person is making and why are you in, why are you studying that other person's pockets? Like, that, that, that's also a thing. You know what I mean? Like, people need to stop pocket watching. It is what it is. I, I don't know if it's necessary pocket watching. I just think sometimes people feel 
indebted maybe or they feel entitled. like entitled entitled that's the better word to use entitled because they came up with you or they may roll with you and if you listen to May's conversation he didn't say cam wasn't entitled and they didn't grind together it's just that yo bro it the wasn't money what wasn't you here thought. yet the money wasn't it, it here wasn't, yet it, it ain't what you think it was mm-hmm. and some people just don't understand that and i was glad to see that not saying that i wish that in our situation in our case with money and violence or some of the cats and money and violence, but hopefully one day niggas can come to a resolve. You know what I mean? A resolve of what? There isn't, there isn't, a, there isn't, to me, there is no real, there's no I, problem. I, 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 I hear you, but like I said, hopefully niggas can come together and one day come to a resolve. That's all I believe it there, bro. I believe it there, say that. But in the other beef, <laughs> we just think of him, yo, this thing, yo, I don't, yo, E, I don't think, give a mother. What? <laughs> nah, whatever, man. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah. So I see, you know, him and Joe Buttons going back and forth. Um, you know what I mean? Um, What's with, that with, about? Nori, with Nori. I don't know. They argue about some podcasts. Oh, I, I stuff. think, I think, I think, I think um, it was over. Nori and Joe had this uh, segment. I don't know. I think Joe was on Nori's show, or whatever, and they were just talking about. They sit back and laugh and watch all the failed rappers that are trying to do podcasts now. And I think Cam took that personal. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I see Nori come out and was like, "Yo, listen." When he taped that episode, he can't. He didn't even know Cam had his uh, podcast out. And once again, there's another thing of miscommunication, and maybe it was some real shots thrown there. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why people care whoever in this space or not. You know what I mean? If if brothers are out here trying to figure out their own way and they doing what they doing, let them do what they gonna do. The stage is big enough for everybody. everybody you know man. what I'm saying? And that's the only thing about us sometimes, right? Black people, some some sometimes we just we like crabs in the barrel. We can't. Seem to big up each other and help each other up, you know what I mean? For some, for whatever reason that is, you know. So I hope the brothers um, could could uh, hash out their differences and move past, and you know, keep making money. They all legends in their own right. So and know. another thing too, I saw that in the back and forth, it was like, yo, you know where I be and blah blah blah. This is another thing I got to say about black people, right? Y'all ain't got a gangster and thug out every space that y'all enter, mm. right? Like, the podcast arena doesn't need to become the streets like rap did, bro. Like, <laughs> everything y'all enter becomes gangster. Like, seriously, bro. Nah, we don't, don't need be. podcast beef and podcast wars. Like, come on, bro. Not like, <laughs> yo, they, I think we got more guns than all them <laughs> niggas, though. Hey. <laughs> allegedly, 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 allegedly. Allegedly. Let me stop. I'm just bullshit. But, yo, as a matter of fact, <laughs> Last week, um, last Tuesday, I was at the shooting range. You know what I'm saying? Oh, how Letting was that? some things off. Nah, listen. Yo, you know, I, I still got it. Wait, wait, wait. I definitely wait, wait. still I, got it. Time out. I got my I got my sheets in the car from uh, I was at the shooting range two months ago. I, I got a couple of bulls eyes in my joint. My listen, joint. I only I, got headshots and, and, and chest shots on my joint. But I ain't gonna lie, <laughs> I still got it. But um, I'm really I'm, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna purchase a membership because I'm gonna I'm gonna go out to Jersey and shoot at least once a month, man. Just to keep myself. You got like twenty nigga. It doesn't matter. All I need is an ID in Jersey, baby. Ah, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Yo, you know they got a. I was in East New York the other day. It's a gun range in East New York, bro. There's a gun range in East New York. Yeah, right on Jamaica Avenue, bro. Get out of here. Yeah, it's an underground gun range in Jamaica. I think it's only it's like for police and stuff like that. Snitch but time with style. <laughs> he said underground gun range. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't, underground meaning oh, okay. underground. underground. Like, okay. Oh, nah, but it's, on, but it's, it's only for police? Yeah, yeah, I think it's for police, oh, yeah. Okay. But I seen it. I was like, I ain't, what, what's this? You know what I'm saying? I never knew it was one in East New York, but... It is what it is. Yeah. Well, shout it, out to DTSP on um, shooting range in Jersey. You know what I'm oh. saying? They were very welcome and showed showed uh showed me a lot of love. A lot of love, a lot of love. Real quick, man. I, uh, before we even go sh- any further in the show, want to shout out our fellow uh, money and violence actors on one, on the show. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Shout Dude, out my guy, Dude Dollars. Dude Dollars. Shoot um, Shane. She played Shooter Shane on the show. His pops passed away. So R.I.P. and my condolences to his family. And um, in a time of bereavement. Yeah, definitely sending our love. You know, very um, strong brother can do from uh, from Far Rock, from Queens. You yeah. know, um, very accomplished man, real good dude. My condolences to you, do. Definitely, definitely, big up yourself. Um, check this out. So, I was watching this other joint. Was kind of um, saw it on the internet. Um, I saw the brat and uh, her her uh, wife. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, I guess they was looking for um, a donor, sperm donor for the baby. I've seen a lot of people talking about this, and they're saying that um, most of the guys, the black men, look like Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> he was trying to get, 
I don't know why that's funny to me. Um, they, they, ended up choo- they ended up choosing a white donor. Um, they did. I don't know who they ended up choosing. In Atlanta. I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what they chose. It's, it's just hard for me but to I also believe. seen the young lady came out and said, the reason why, because there's only 5% of black men that, um, 5% of the donors, of I guess the total donors, are black. And then she had a couple of diseases that run her DNA. And if she, when you run that against the 5%, with those DNA, some of those people match. So it was like 1% or 2% of the guys that she could pick from. And then those guys she picked from, she didn't like none of them. I guess they didn't like none of those guys. Well, all I can say is this. If you went into the situation wanting a black father, there wouldn't be any other option. And to, to, to not choose other guys simply because this one was funny looking or this, hmm, I don't know. Seems to me, seems, seems, look, 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 listen, to, e- listen to, each, to each is her own. If, if they wanted a mixed child or they wanted, mm-hmm. you know, uh, a, a white father, hey, bro, to each is her own. Yeah, That's I, not my business. <laughs> but I just feel like, yo, stand on your shit. If that's what you want, it's it. Shoot, that's what you want. It is what it is. Uh, yeah, but I, 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 don't, I don't really have no comment, man. I just thought the story was funny. I'm like, what? I, I, it's the world we live in, man. That's all I got to say. They wanted a light-skinned baby with good hair. Uh, yeah, listen, man. <laughs> and under, something, something struck me kind of interesting the other day. I was watching um, Marlon Wayans, and basically he was saying that he only has two cars. Uh-huh. Right? He has a Range Rover from once he, when he first got uh, popping. That got to be an old-ass Range Rover. <laughs> he uh-huh. He's been popping for a while. Um, and he said he has a Tesla now. Man, he was like, yo... He don't, he don't look at happiness and buying things like, you know, big houses, cars, and jewelry and all that. Happiness comes from within. And I also saw a comment um, from 50 Cent. This happened the same thing. He was saying that, you know, he don't really put on designer like that because when he start looking at, um, like, what a T-shirt costs, and he knows, like, being in the fashion, that same $8 t-shirt, they just put their imprint on it and they sell it to you for four or $500. He's like, oh, why would I put somebody's clothes on my body that costs, they're giving me an $8 shirt? Well, you know what I mean? What, 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 and what, they was kind of saying two different things, but it's in the same vein. But, so I just but, brought both of them up, kind of just kind of speak about But them. what I would say about something like that is, I mean, you have to look at those two men and look at when they're saying this and what stage in their career, you know? Marlon Wayans has been successful for what over 20 25 years Mm -hmm. 50 cent Mm -hmm. has been successful what 15 damn near 20 years if not Mm -hmm. 20 years you understand what i mean so i think um at this point in their career at their at this point in their lives i mean they should have progressed to that point where none of that stuff matters you know but it's kind of hard to ask somebody who's at the beginning of that journey to think that way because i always say you got to blow money to know money right and there's certain experiences that you have to go through in order to mature and to wisen up and it would be great if we can skip that part of the process and skip those mistakes but the truth is no lessons um no lessons are learned harder, and no, no wisdom comes uh, 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 more, more solid than the one that's learned from mistakes. And I think that 50 in his past probably, yeah, of course, he wore designer and all of that, but he got to a point where he realized that. And I think the same thing with Marlon Wayans. I think um, probably when you know, he first got his success, he um, splurged on this, splurged on that, till, till he got to the point where he realized that you know, there's no happiness in that. I don't know. I want to play different. I think sometimes, I think that's more like a, you know, I don't want to say a cultural or black trait. Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if white people do the same thing or other, other race of people do the same thing. Like, got to go, you know, buy a bunch of designer or get the, you know, I remember being in Jersey growing up, like, with my pops, like, going to his house. And, you know, when we wore all the Jordans and the Nikes and stuff like that, you know, white kids had on the, you know, the Skippies and they had mm-hmm. on, uh, what's, what's the, um... The vans and stuff the like that. To Chuck yeah, they had like the cheapest niggas. I, I, I think that's the. I think sometime innately in us, black people, since we don't come from nothing, when we have something or we don't have something, we try to put on things to make us feel like we made it, or like we have it. Sometimes that's what I feel like. You know what I'm saying? Because even going to school, you know, you got teased if you didn't have on the fly. Yeah, yeah. but but I, but I, like, and you know or. Or you got called poor if you couldn't we're so, afford yeah. We're so invisible in this world that we want to acquire things in order to be seen. I mean, that's all it is. Mm. It's, it's a byproduct of how we're treated by society. 
Um, when you're talking about these other races, I mean, who they're born with their respect. With us as blacks, when we come into the world, we kind of have to earn our respect. That's not just handed to mm. us. It's not just given to us. You know, and unfortunately, um, we a lot of times when we're young, um, we feel that the only way to acquire that is by acquiring things, you know. Um, but like I said, it's all part of the journey, man. And you get to a point where you mature and you come to realize, because I always say this, it's like, you climb this mountain just to realize when you get to the top of it that the joke's on you because nothing that you thought was up there is up, up there. Up there. No, you, you're absolutely right about <laughs> you that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're right about that. I don't never think, I don't think I was ever into, like, I've never been, I've never been the car person. Like, I never was into that. Like, I never was, like, I got to go get this car. Do I want a nice car if I could, if I could, like, really afford, like, like, I've always thought about the bigger picture. Let me go buy a house first or let me go you know, spend my money on my daughter education and stuff like that. I never, I never thought about that type of stuff. Not saying if I had like the abundance of wealth, would I go splurge on something? Maybe I would, but I've never been that. I've never been the guy. Yo, I remember growing up, man, <clears throat> I go buy five pair of jeans, V. Five pair of decent jeans. They ain't got to, and you know, I, I try not to buy the joints with no designs on the back of the jeans. So this way they last me for two years. See, <laughs> you know well, what I'm you, saying? You, you good. I mean, you know what I mean? Since... And you've got a clean white t-shirt, a clean black t-shirt, and a dope hat and some good sneakers. You good to go. You I know mean, what I'm saying? Grown, Just be clean. You know what I'm saying? Growing up, growing up where I grew up in Flatbush, like fashion was such a big thing. Oh, that's I mean, the polo. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, bro, yeah. like Tommy all Hilfiger. I all I wore, all I wore was low. You know, we boosted. Um, and all of that, and I mean, it was all, and it was always about getting fly. Like for us, it was just, it was a lifestyle. It wasn't even, a, it wasn't even just a thing. Like we literally eat, sleep, shit, Ralph Lauren. <laughs> My teenage years, you know. Now, what I mean? And I and I agree with you. And I felt the same way in East New York. Like you know, we had, they had low lives. They had you know all, all all that stuff happening. Too, I just felt like. I couldn't play with it. Like I couldn't keep up. Mm -hmm. Like you had one. Polo that's why. Shirt. That's why we boosted. That's why we went. Yeah, and I know. Stole I knew, it. We had the Lindsay bags and all that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, listen, I've seen a lot of security get knocked out at the door. Trust me, of uh, downtown Brooklyn on Fulton. But what I'm saying to you is, hold on, not to cut you off, right? One year, um, I think it was my freshman year of high school. My mother gave me two hundred dollars to go school shopping. And I came, she was so pissed because I came back with one Paul sweater. <laughs> Yo, but I, I was just about to say this. I see guys back in them days, you ever seen a kid that had a two shirt? He only wore the two shirts for the whole for the whole month. He had the same polo shirt oh, on I for about a week. I wasn't I'm not saying that's you, yeah. but a lot of people were had the same polo time here figure. So I'm just saying and a lot of times. We're at the death. We're at the death, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so. To me, I, I think I learned at an early age, like I couldn't compete, so I wasn't trying to compete, you know what I'm saying? So I just tried to figure out other ways to, you know, to be fly and still and still fit in and, and not and be comfortable in my skin too. And I think a lot of us has gotta be comfortable in our skin. You know, clothes don't make you, jewelry nope. don't make you, cars don't make you, none nope. of that shit make you. You make you. So at the end of the day, keep making yourself be like none of that shit make you. You can walk in the room, I can walk in the room with a, a dude with a three piece suit on or the best Chanel. Gucci outfit, and I still feel comfortable with my skin, bro. Of course. I mean, but at, 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 once again, I, I think it's about experience. It's about maturity. At this point in my life, like, I don't need none of that to feel comfortable. Mm. You know, I always say, don't be the... You should be able to feel like a million bucks without having on thousand dollar sneakers. Definitely. You know, like to be honest with you, my favorite sneakers are Converse Chuck Taylors. Yeah, yeah, you always. Say that. <laughs> you yeah, you yeah. understand what I'm they, saying? Those are the so, most uncomfortable sneakers I could ever. <laughs> I love me. Con I love yeah, Chucks, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I and I love and I love Jordan ones because to me, Jordan ones are like the new Converse Chuck Taylors. Well, they're the comfortable it's the all, Chuck Taylors. It's man. the all-purpose <laughs> shoe that you could wear with anything. Thing. No, no, you're right. You know, you're right. So listen, man. I saw something kind of crazy, and, uh, and I think you might be a little disappointed um, <laughs> in your love life. <laughs> so they, they have a study out that's saying that oral sex is giving throat cancer, HPV um, uh, cancer. So basically from, the, uh, from cervical cancer. I didn't know, but it sounds like, what and I could mean, be so wrong. I'm, I'm confused. From a woman's cervix. So if a man licks... Vagina. V vagina, or he, he having sex with her with his penis, you he, know what I'm saying? He can get or cancer. He can either transfer cancer to her throat, or he can eat from, Or you he know, can eat down, the cancer. Uh, you know, I don't want to say it, yeah, but you can go down there, fellatio, and... And he can, he can eat the cancer. <laughs> That's crazy. So, 
I don't know, maybe you want to chill out. A lot of men for dead. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to chill out on your uh, fellatio, bro. I don't know if that's going to stop me. Oh, Cunny Liggis, not your fellatio. No, not fellatio. Not your fellatio. You're wildin'. Your, your, your Cunny Liggis, that's what it's called. Uh, your you're <laughs> wildin'. Yeah. This guy yeah. is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. Yo. <laughs> Yo. You're cutting niggas. I'm sorry, my brother. My brother. That's what happens when we try to reuse cor the correct terminologies, man. We get, them, we get them twisted, man. But, you know, some people go, I don't know, man. They said if you got like six partners or more, you should be concerned. Like, you know, because the likelihood of transferring it over that top period crazy. of time. Yeah, they, they just, man, they just keep coming up with new <laughs> shit. Like, which is, but listen, I think 20 years from now, Nobody's touching nobody. We all gonna walk around with garbage bags over our entire <laughs> body. Like, seriously. Like, 20 years from now, breathing is gonna kill you. Like, seriously. Nah, yeah. it, 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 it's a real thing. So, I see that Oxygen's gonna get you sick. Shit, didn't that, didn't that kind of happen with the uh, coronavirus? Well, they, they, they already <laughs> killing us, too. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's crazy, man. Uh, just be careful out there, man. Make sure you uh, protect yourself when you're eating. Pretty soon you'll <laughs> put have a bib to wear, on. <laughs> you're going to have to wear a prophylactic on your tongue. Yeah, put a bib on, man. Make sure you put a bib on. <laughs> make sure you don't make a mess. Yeah, that's crazy. So, I don't know. I don't know what, you, what, what, what are you going to do? You going to stop eating? Put a prophylactic on your tongue. I guess you're going to be a hungry man. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I just think it's hilarious, bro. I'm sorry, man. Um... I want to go to uh, another topic real quick. It's a little, a, a, a little serious. I'm a lot serious. Be be honest with you, man. I, ha, I'm glad I laughed in the in the in the uh, in the subject before this because I don't know if this is really a laugh matter. Um, New York City. Uh, there was a young man. I can't remember his name. You can look him up. But I've seen him on the train before, dancing guy that used to dance like Michael Jackson mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Um. They said he uh, he was homeless on a train. Uh, I read a report that said that you know he had like a hard time during the pandemic. I guess he used to panhandle on the train and uh -huh. get his money. And I I could see the pandemic. A lot of people wasn't riding of the course. train. So um, some mental hardly illness. anyone was anybody the right. Train. Um, mental yeah. illness kind of sunk in at that time. I don't know. This is all speculatory. And he was on a train this this past week, and um, he was kind of belligerent, like telling people he wanted food and. He don't care if he go to jail, but he was kind of just yelling, not mm -hmm. really yelling at anybody, just yelling just through yelling. the car. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being in New York City, sometimes we see this all the time. You know, if you're in New York City, I know people may not be familiar with New York City, but you see people yelling on the train. You see people come on with fake horses. You see people come dancing. It's all kind of things happen on New York City train station. So seeing somebody going through a car yelling, screaming, it's, 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 it's just another day. Yeah, it's just another day in New York City. <clears throat> um, and the rule, the typical rule is, as long as you don't touch me, we cool. You know what I mean? Or oh, back up, get away from me with that. You know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> we cool. Unfortunately, in this situation, it didn't end up like that. Uh, there was a Marine, a white Marine, ex-Marine uh, veteran who was on the train and sought fit to... Jordan Neely. His name was Jordan Neely, the young man? Name, young yeah. guy, name was Jordan Neely. So R.I.P. to him. <clears throat> so fit to choke this guy from behind. To restrain to the restrain man him. by putting him in a chokehold. And mind you, he didn't touch this guy. The guy didn't touch him. He was just screaming through the cart that he ain't having it no more. Um, didn't show no weapon. He just screaming. Like I said, this is a typical day in New York City. Man felt it the need to restrain him and choke him for whatever reason. For 15 minutes. For 15 minutes. While other people were... Helping him and like, look like holding, they was the, to holding, holding the guys. Which... And, I, and I don't understand why I saw the video. The video was terrible. And coming off of George Floyd, Floyd and seeing uh, the police officer with his knee on his neck and knowing what happened in that situation, nobody thought for a second, like, yo, this shouldn't be going on for this long. That's what I don't understand. Now, now let, let's go beyond that, right? Like, I've ridden the subway... You know, for years, my entire life, because I, I, I've been in New York my entire life, and I've been in situations. Um, I remember I was on the train with my, my daughter. My daughter was two at the time, 
and a homeless man came on the train and he was, I guess he was crazy and he was just cursing up a storm mm -hmm. and he's literally sitting across from me and I'm sitting there with my two year old daughter and you know, I wait to get eye contact with him. And as soon as we get eye contact, I'm like, yo bro, like you don't see me here with my child. Like you need to chill, you know? And he looked at me and he was like, you know what? My bad. And he stopped, right? Now, I understand that we see this on the news sometimes that homeless people or, or somebody on the train, somebody gets stabbed out of nowhere, blah, 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 this, mm -hmm. this, this. But in the same breath, that man screaming throughout the cars does not merit him losing his life. life. And I don't understand why. So the gentleman that choked him out, um, what's his name? So we can let people know who he is, too. Um, that choked him out and took his life. Police took him in for questioning and, and released him, him, right? And I don't know, once again, it's like black life don't matter, right? And that's why I think it was so important when they say black life do matter. And I don't know why a white person felt like, and I don't want to make this a black issue. I was about issue. to say, I don't, I don't want to make it a black uh, but, and but white you, thing. But we can't, we because can't. It can, it, it can, because it can also be an economic thing, right? It can, you can also look at it as homeless lives don't mean nothing. You understand? Now I hear you, but at the same time, it just seemed like white people sometimes, and I just got to be honest, feel like they, they want to police black people. Or you want to play the sheriff, or you want to play the police officer, or the military guy, or the uh, deputy, whatever you want to play. Citizens arrest. You know what I'm saying? And Andrew Savilich. Andrew Savilich. That's his name. Lock Andrew Savilich up, ass up, please. Um, and being that he was a Marine, he was trained to kill. So there's no way you could put this person in a restraint as the way you did and not know you was going to take Within his 15 life. 15 minutes. And, and the it, truth is it takes a fifth less than, it takes 30 seconds. You could kill somebody in 30 seconds. But, well, but no, stop no. in their breath. I think, I think 30 to 60 seconds will knock them out, right? Uh, anything, once you're, t once you're approaching four minutes, five minutes, you're talking about possibly making that person brain dead or killing them because you're stopping oxygen to the brain. I think it's over, if it's a minute, so you, a minute without oxygen, you could go brain dead or something like that. I'm not sure of those numbers, mm -hmm. but he was a trained Marine. At the end of the day, he was trained how to take people's life. So for you to put a person in that restraint that didn't have, that wasn't harming anybody for 15 minutes, it's no way in hell you should be, and they just, the medical, medical examiner Determin just, yeah, just, just determined it, a homicide. Th that it was a homicide. Mm -hmm. So now they're putting out an investigation on him. What investigation? There's a video. What is there to investigate? Go lock, what's his name again? Go lock Andrew Civilic up. Like, it's that simple. <laughs> it's that simple. It's crazy. And my, I, I just wonder if, um, if the situations... Oh, with well, reverse. And if it, it was, was a black man choking out a white man. Choked out a white homeless man. Oh, come on, man. man. Come on, bro. Like, <laughs> he'd have been asking for bill. They'd have probably denied the bill. But right, I'm laughing because I'm just being honest. That's what would have happened. We, it's no, it's no question about that. And it's just like, yo, it gotta stop, man. It, 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 at some point, does it have? Does it gotta stop? Because obviously it isn't. Uh, it should stop. <laughs> well, you know, it like, should stop. It, it don't stop. gotta stop because it ain't yeah, stopping. It should stop. Yeah. So, um. I want to say this too. Another thing that's real important, and you know, we got a mayor out here. Um, I won't put this on this mayor because he just came in the office. Maybe it's de Blasio before or the mayors before, but I've never seen homelessness like this in New York City. I'm not saying this mayor don't have nothing to do with it, but I remember before uh, Adams came in here, they had all the shelters coming up, they had all the the immigrants that was coming into New York City that the other states were putting in New York City because of whatever political things that were going on a few months back. And the homelessness, I remember when we went to LA, that's the craziest place I ever seen homeless. Mm -hmm. I've never, like we used to get up in the, where we were staying at at that time? Santa Monica. Santa, Santa Monica. Yo, bro, I've never seen so many homeless people on the street. Over there by the pier, by the beach. Never seen nothing like that. Um, never seen that. Um, and then I got to go to, uh, uh, what they call that? Not Skid Row. Skid Row. Skid Row. Okay, cool. Sean P drove me over there and it was just like a street of just, it was a city of homeless people, homeless people. I've never seen nothing like that. And New York city, I took the train a few months ago. Yo, bro, I ain't been on the train in a minute. It was just like zombies walking outside, bro. It's just a different place. 
And we got money for everything. We bring in all those Ukrainian refugees here and giving them all this all support. Kind of, all the support. We have <clears> money for uh, the police officers. Not saying they don't deserve their money. We got money for all kind of things, but we never seem to have money for the people or the youth. We don't ever have money for those things, and we gotta. That's gotta be a big change in New York City, man. Like, it, it's just way too much homeless people out here. It's way too many mentally disturbed people but on where, the street. But where they gonna live when the rents are five, six, seven thousand dollars a month? And it, it, listen, man, we gotta fix this. This is the biggest city, the most known city in the whole entire and one world. One of the most expensive cities. Yeah, too. yeah. But guess what though? Every time we, they don't have a problem getting them tickets, they ain't got a problem putting them. Light cameras out there, they get money. Listen, the I'm not gonna lie to you, them speed tickets is busting my ass, bro. <laughs> so, listen, yo, bro. I just paid 230 today. Listen, in I just paid 150 because that, because those, because two tickets are in judgment. I got like six more to go. Oh, yeah. I, I had 230 in judgment today and they could take your car. So, I was like, oh, let me yeah, pay that. Yeah, exactly. Like, but I'm just saying, New York City's getting their money. We're getting the money out here. We find money for what we wanna find money for. Uh, this government found, we gotta find, start finding money for our homeless and our mentally ill people that's out here, man. I just want to leave that message out there. Uh, yeah, so, you know, listen, man, we got to do better. Um, move on to something. I don't even know what I want to move on to, because when I start talking about stuff like that, it kind of just bring me down to a, uh, I don't know. <laughs> See, the next topic I want to bring up is so crazy. I don't even want to bring that up. <laughs> yeah, we got, we got to stop with these topics. Oh, interesting topic, bro. I don't know if you... Interesting. You know, we try to leave these topics alone sometimes. Um, I've seen a crazy, oh, this is crazy. I don't even know where to start with this. So, a transgender male who identifies as a, a transgender female. woman. Is it a woman? Yeah, Listen, that's a is male. A tra- is a transgender that, male, the male that, identifies that identifies as a woman. That's a, a transgender as a woman. woman. Okay, cool. Because I, I don't like to say nothing wrong. I'm just going to explain it the best way I know how to explain it. A teenager was going to a bathroom with other females. The females was a cost to him. I guess they was calling him names and saying why he using the female bathroom. Which means they're not comfortable. They wasn't, basically they wasn't comfortable with him in their bathroom. He took offense to what they were saying. He started throwing blows. My thing is, he started punching them, but he beat their ass like a dude. You know what I'm saying? So Because he is a dude. It, and it's just, and you know, two wrongs don't make it right, right? I don't think it's... I don't know. I don't even know how to feel anymore, bro. It's like, a, it's not I, about two wrongs don't make I, it right. If I walk into the woman's bathroom and the women go, "You don't belong here," and I punch them in the face, I'm going to jail. So I just don't understand why it is that if I walk into the woman's bathroom and I say, "I think I'm a woman," and the reality is I'm not a woman, a woman, and the women are uncomfortable and say, "You don't belong here," and I punch them in the face, why am I not going to jail? So, you know, so funny. Two <clears throat> things happened. Last week, all right, before I go into last week, I was in the gym earlier today, and a guy, he went into the woman's bathroom. He said he went in there by mistake. I just happened to be down there when uh-huh. I was talking to him. He went in there, nobody was in the bathroom. So he went to basically an empty bathroom. He probably didn't read the sign on the door, sat down uh-huh. on the bench, took off his clothes, and put it on. But two women walked in there. And they said to him, so why you didn't leave when the two women walked in there? You know what he said? It's not funny, but it's, he said, I thought they was trainings. Like, I, I didn't want to say. You don't know what's going on. <laughs> Yo, but I, I was so, it was so funny. Reality to me. is all, you, you don't he know. Didn't, he didn't there, know. There's no he, rules to reality He was no saying more. that he's seen, you know, transgender men in the gym before. So he didn't think nothing of it because he didn't know if the women identified. As men. As, as men. They were really men, but identified as women. So he didn't think nothing of it. He just said, I put my head down and just put on my clothes. I didn't want to. So I'm sitting there like, yo, is this the world we live in? Because I'm totally confused, right? I have, I don't know what the answer is. So last week, I was in the bathroom. I went to the New Edition concert. You know what I'm saying? Went to the concert. And you know, sometimes the women's bathroom always had a long line. I guess because women got to do more. They got to take off their pants uh-huh. and sit down on the toilet and all that. So as I'm in there, a group of women rush into the men's bathroom. And they're like, yo, we got to go. And I'm like, yo. They can do that. 
It's just crazy. Ben's like, all right, whatever. Yeah, they can do that. I, yo, listen, I'm just so confused at this point. You know, I think you know, everybody you know, should have their own you know bathroom. Why, but you, everybody can't. Transy, but you, Transy but you, should have their own bathroom. Men should have their own bathroom. But you know why have women? Their own like, you know I don't why, even know. You know why women have always been able to do that, though, going to the men's bathroom? It's because they pose no threat to the men. Mm -hmm. Men can't go in the women's bathroom because it poses a threat. Not saying that, you know, that every I man, don't know about that, bro. Because. You know, Listen, the first time I was, let me just say this. Wait, wait, wait. Let, let me, me just, let me wait, I just, I just want to finish one thing. It's not about what you will do. It's about what you can do, right? And, and what I mean by that is it's not saying that you'll rape a woman, but as a man, you do have the physical strength to overpower Power. her. But guess what, man? I, I, I think that's crock of shit, too. So... Um, what I mean by this is a crock of shit, I remember going to the tunnel. You remember the tunnel? Yeah, I remember the tunnel. I remember the party of the tunnel. Yeah. The first time Unisex I went, bathroom. I, it, that's the first time I ever went to a Unisex bathroom. As soon as I went in the bathroom, I started urinating. The girl was like, three girls was behind me. Mm -hmm. She's like, yo, pull it out, let me see it. Right? And the other girl's like, yeah, turn around. So, listen, you can get accosted in the bathroom too for women. And every Unisex bathroom I've been in, you know, I've seen women say crazy things to men. So I think it goes both ways either way. But can they overpower I you? I don't know. They could have jumped me in the bathroom, bro. Like, what the no, fuck are you talking no. about? They could have jumped me and attacked me, all three of them? I was, you know, I was fine and sexy, but I think like, are you crazy? <laughs> but, yo, either way, go. I just think everybody should have their own bathroom. I agree. I, I, thought it, I thought it was a crazy situation. Um, situation, I don't even know how to come. I'm question. not even sure. Now, qu now question. Mm -hmm. If your child went to that school and she was one of those girls that he attacked, how would you feel? Yo, I would feel I, any, if, if my attack, attack, uh, my child was attacked by anybody, I feel crazy. Yeah, but it's not e it's not even about just the be. They were attacked in the female's bathroom where that male is not supposed to be. No, no, I. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know if he was supposed to be there because you know some schools allow. If you, I'm not talking about by the school standards. No, but law. I'm talking about by the standards of decency. Yeah, we, we, that's not a, that's not a thing. You making that up, right? So How, who's, I, who's I just like no. Listen, 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 listen. I just like clarity on the show because now they have laws where transgender men. I don't agree they, with those laws. No, and that's fine. I'm not saying that you don't have to agree, but I don't know if it was a law in that school. Like if he he, he was allowed. to No, he was that allowed. Law. He was allowed. Yeah. So I don't know. He was allowed. Yeah, so but yeah, I yeah. saw. But I also saw one of the one um one of the little girls from one of the schools over there address the city council, and that's what she was basically stating: is like, yo, we're over here conforming to these males who. If I if I quote her correctly, mm -hmm. she said these males who have like some type of mental issue, mm -hmm. right, with their identity and they mm -hmm. don't know who they are, and y'all are doing everything to pretty much, uh uh uh. Y'all are doing everything to succumb to them, but what about us, organic females who are uncomfortable with this? Mm. Yo, listen, because man. because because <clears throat> what they don't realize is it is. These uh, natural females, it's their space. This, before this whole trans thing came along, that was their space. No, no, I, yo, listen, bro. I 100% agree, 100% get you. I just don't know the answers, bro. I don't know the answers anymore. I know what I feel, but I, it's like, yo, even if we feel a certain way, we're not allowed to feel a certain way no more, and everybody attack. I'm, I'm not allowed saying, to feel however I'm the not hell saying, I want listen, to feel. But people attack that, right? So, I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. I don't know what the right answers in the society is no anymore. There are um, no right answers as far as society. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. Laws can change, mm -hmm. right? Right will always be right. And, and this is where I think the lines are getting blurred, bro. Laws can change, but right will always be right and wrong will always be wrong. And this is, I think, this, listen, man does not control right or wrong, bro. Man can change laws, Yo, bro, but at the end of the day, right will yeah, always be right and wrong same, will always same, be wrong. And at the same time, we're governed by the laws. So guess what? Whether it's right or wrong in your eyes, we're still governed by the law. It's and not it, in my eyes. No, hold up. Time out. Listen to me. You're still governed by the law. So what will happen is when an officer comes in to that situation and they want to arrest you because how the law is written, then you could be, ar you could be arrested and serve time for that said Stand law. for something or fall for nothing? Uh, uh, I'm not saying that you, don't, you can't do that. I'm just telling you what it is, what we live at in this day and time. But I'm going to move on to the next subject, because we're going to talk about Suki with the good coochie. 
That's her name, right? That's her name? Super I don't... Duper. That's her name? Uh, that's a hell of a name, bro. <laughs> you would love, of course you'd love yeah, it. Man. It's a hell of a name, Suki with the good coochie. So I seen this talking about Suki with the good coochie, man. I, I, I don't know if this shit is for Instagram. I don't know if it's for um, shock value. For shock value. She was just basically saying that she want a man that could urinate in her mouth, that could fart in her face, and she could she could defecate on him and do the same thing to him. And I was just sitting there like, <laughs> yeah, what kind of, yeah. I thought it was funny because um, where will we be in 10 years? I, I have no idea, bro. It's, it's a scary sight. Excuse yeah, me. I mean, in, in all honesty, like, you know, these, all of these things, right? Like, and, and to each has her own, you know, if you like being peed on, great for you. You like being shitted on, great for you. But <laughs> what I'm saying is these, these things are becoming the norm, right? Yeah. These things are becoming the norm. So my question is in the direction that we're going in, where will we be in 10 years? I mean... You know, not to get all biblical, but it's right before our eyes that we headed to Sodom and Gomorrah, bro. Oh, uh, 100%. If we're not there already. Yo, but I want to tell you, before we go that far, though, because before we go down that road, man, I, I did have a female ask me to do this before, though. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I haven't done it before. <laughs> not, to, not, not, not to dookie. <laughs> a female that asked me one time, like, yo, yo, when we finish, man, like, I want you to get up and, like, urinate in my mouth. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I got you. I'm, I'm going to do it, right? And I'm psyching myself out, and I'm sitting there like, I, I'm, I'm hit, you know, I'm doing my thing. I'm like, yeah. And I nut, and I'm like, I don't want to do that no more. Oh. <laughs> like, the sensation is gone. Like, I could never do it. And she's like, yeah. She gets on the floor, and like, kneels down, and like, I'm like, yeah. Wah, 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 wah. I'm good. I just start thinking about who cleaned it up to you. Like, I'm not kidding. That's why you got to do it in the bathtub. In the bathtub? Listen, man. After I, after I do my thing, man. Oi, 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 put the shower curtain on the bed. I'm done, bro. I'm going to sleep, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm done. Like, and I'm it's, done. Hard, it's hard to pee after you... After now, you actually, too. it is. It's like the worst thing. It sounds like you got gonorrhea after and then, you And then... Because I, I start yelling. And you, and you can't pee straight. You can't pee straight. You go, oh, kind of way. I start yelling. I'm like, ah! I know girl be like, yo, did he burn me? Like, what happened? I, yeah, I, I, I got to yell and let it come out. But, nah, I, yeah, I couldn't I could do it, bro. After, I'm good when we, like, having sex. Oh, And you can tell on. me. I tell yo, you bro, anything. Listen, man. You know what I'm saying? Listen. But that nut come, my sense come back, bro. <laughs> At, yo, bro. By, oh, no, bro. by the end of sex, I done owed a chick a jet plane. <laughs> I done owed her a Lambo. <laughs> like, yo. I love the five different ways. Yo. Like, I, so Suki with the good coochie, if you don't get me before the sex, it's, uh, the fart ain't gonna come out. I just can't, I, I can't shit on you. <laughs> I, don't know what this, I don't know what to say, man. Suki with the good coochie, man. Like, I, like it, it's cool that everybody's exploring their bodies and everybody's mm -hmm. sexually free, but this shit is starting to get weird, bro. Yeah, nah, I guess so, man. It's getting a, it's getting a little crazy out here, man. The young people just crazy. You remember it was like taboo when you were growing up and chicks wouldn't even say they give head? Yo, bro, I was about to say, back in the day, if 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 you told somebody a chick gave head, like, she would cry. <laughs> cry, like, <laughs> yo, bro. She was, like, you could... Now she's like, yeah, I give head. I, I suck the skin off your now, daddy. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, now it's, it's, like it's, it's a little different out here these It'd be like, if you a hoe and you know it, clap your hands. And it'd be a round of applause. <laughs> like, everybody clap your hands. You know, like, yo, listen, man. Chicks be like, I'm a hoe and? It's different. Oh, man. you mad? <laughs> yo, it's so crazy because a chick will, your girl could have sex with your father or have sex with your man. And then she'll be like, so look at him. He mad. Yeah, he mad. <laughs> like what the hell? <laughs> yo, yo, and yeah, that's a crazy situation. But um, seen this other thing on IG the other day. You know I be on IG a little bit sometimes. So I seen this thing on IG. <clears throat> it was it was a guy. He he was going on a second date with a girl, mm -hmm. right? Um, so they had two dates, and he was supposed to be taking her to Capitol Grill. I don't know if you ever been to Capitol Grill. It's a nice little joint, you know what I'm saying? But when she got to his crib to meet him. He had to cook dinner for her. And they got into an argument because she's like, yo, listen, you're supposed to take me to Capitol Grill and you're making dinner for me. You know, why would you lie to me and tell me you're taking me to Capitol Grill and you, you, you just cook for me and you just thought I was going to just want to eat at your house? 
And he's like, yo, basically, look, you sh- ungrateful because I'm, I cook for you. Why are you mad? You know, I think it's a toss-up kind of thing. I do too. I think, I think, I think it can go either way. I think on one hand, um, she felt <coughs> she felt misled. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe he shouldn't have told her he was taking her to Capitol Grill. Mm-hmm. But I think in his defense, he probably thought that him cooking was the upgrade. Like it was better than Capitol Capitol Grill, right? Because I'm taking my time to do this from you for you, and I'm cooking, you know, with love. You get where I'm coming from, but. He has discovered that she don't give a damn about that. Bye bye. And um, I think also too. Second date could be crazy, even though it's crazy that I'm saying this now, right? I guess nowadays is that second date. You know, she came to the house, and he cooked. He cooked for, her, but he also told her, "Look, I'm taking you out." So you're expecting to go yeah, out. That's right? what I'm saying. She felt misled. She so. She expected to go out, but at the same time, I think there is some appreciation. If she likes him, I don't think she liked him that much. I don't think so either. If she liked him, she would have probably appreciated. But these days, man, the female. females are so weird, bro. <laughs> Yo, they are. I'm sorry, man. Like these days, the things that turn women off, it's just crazy. Oh, we went to dinner and he cut his meat into like little pieces, and it annoyed me. Like, it's just, I don't know, women are weird these days. Listen, bro. man, if a woman chooses to cook for me, I can't tell you the last time a woman cooked for me. But I, I also believe if a woman likes you, she don't she pick, don't it though, pick they, it all they, those they, things. But if a woman want to cook for me and your house is clean, I'm going to eat, man. <laughs> so, as long as your house is clean, man, and, and if, you wash and if, your meat. And if, you know and what if what house comes over and your house is dirty, he's still going to eat. No, <laughs> you might get cancer. So. Oh no, nah, definitely <laughs> eat that. We ain't definitely eat that. <laughs> Listen, you know that's why I try. Yo, I start. You know I don't like going to women's house, but I'm thinking about going back to women's house, man. It's time to go, man. Because how do you? And, and that's my thing, right? Because how do you really get to know a woman if you've never been to her home? Yo, because sometimes you go to these chicks' crib and. They be smelling like Gucci perfume, perfume Chanel. <laughs> they got the latest shoes on. You go to the crib, and they got the big ring around the toilet. The tub yeah, got but, the but, big but ring around you, it. But the then, house is dirty. But then you and you like, yo, she smelled like potpourri when she came outside. But the house was like, hey, yeah, you got to kind of. But, but then you need to know. That. And I mean, listen, this is my thing, right? I, I think everyone's human. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you catch people on an off day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, y'all may have stopped by her crib or... Whatever, whatever. I mean, you can look at it in two ways, man. You can look at it as, uh, damn, like she knew I was coming, she didn't clean up. Or you can look at it as she don't want to fake the funk for you, right? It's like, no, all right. she want to keep the funk for you. Yeah, <laughs> fake the funk for yeah, you. But, but I'm, just, I'm just saying, pe- people are human, you know? And, um, like but you, mess and dirt is two different things, bro. True. Messy and dirty is two totally different It's two different, different things. things. That's true. That's true. It's two different things. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, I want to get into these two conversations because one I saw with Steve Harvey and then one I saw with uh, Ayanna Van Zant. That's how you say it? Ayanna Van Zant. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So Steve... Fix my life, Ayanna. <laughs> um, so Steve was saying, Z's is definitely in the house because I said nothing but storm, but we're going to address that later. But um, <laughs> Yo, Z's with that. <laughs> so um, Steve Harvey was saying if he had the millions of dollars that he had, now at 30, he'd have used it for evil. Um, basically, he would have been out there trying to get every woman that he could have access to now at that young age. And God didn't really, he, saw, he felt like God didn't give him that because he knew he, he wasn't ready for it. He wasn't ready for it. And I can relate to that too, man. I think. So can I. Um, if you gave me certain, certain things, if I was blessed with certain things at an early age, maybe I would have squandered it or I'd have been out here dumping things. Do you know, do you know that um, a large majority of the people that win the lottery, end up blowing that money within five years. And a lot of people that win the lottery, that money ends up destroying their lives. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I needed some water. Yeah. Um, no, nah, I know that. Um, yeah, but I, I, I totally agree with Steve with that in, in that premise. Um, but sometimes you need to go through that to figure, figure out who you are and, and what you are and what you can deal with and what you can't deal with. I always say, you got to blow money to know money. Um, so, you know, I, I'm pretty sure he... He 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 tapped a couple <laughs> couple of things out there before before he settled down. You know what I'm saying? After he got money, because Steve <laughs> looks like a horse. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? 
Um, yeah. yeah. And then he brought up this other thing he was saying, Steve Harvey was also talking about, he was saying a lot of men ask uh, what women, why men ask what women supposed to be bringing to the table. And basically he's saying that um, only thing a woman really need to bring to the table is the baby basically that she birthed, birthed you. You know what I'm saying? That she makes another you. That's what she can bring to the table. A, a man's job is to provide and protect for his women, right? Um, and to me, I had, I, I just felt like it was just a mis, a misconstrued quote. It's misguided. That, that he gave. Do not take dating advice from rich men. <laughs> yeah. Because, All right? Ask them what did they think before they got rich. Because he wasn't thinking that. And I just think it's, <laughs> I think they put these things on these kids, man. We give these messages to these, I just, I'm into young couples. And when you're young and you're dating, if you could find love young and you could find somebody that you could spend your rest of your life with and you could build with, I think that's a great thing. And sometimes that don't come with a person who's super successful right off the bat. Um, on either side of the fence, sometimes you got to grow with each other and help build each other up and build the wealth. So um, for Steve, I didn't think that was the right message to give out to young men um, not saying they can't strive to be excellent or get other things, but you know, when he say that Steve going to be the same person that start talking crap when dudes out there shooting and killing each other or selling drugs for, you know, you shouldn't be selling he's, drugs. He's giving, he's giving advice that relates to him at this point, point in his, his life. life. I mean, Steve, yeah. uh, you know, you said it yourself. There was a point in time when you was sleep. Wait, was he, he was sleeping in his car for three years. He was sleeping in his car for three years. So at that time, did you feel the same way? I'm sure that you didn't, you know, it's. It's great to give people advice, and, and I think that that is the dangerous thing with taking advice from celebrities, is that their lives are so far removed from the lives of regular people. You understand? They almost can't even relate to your life. life. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You and sometimes we just got to make sure we give the advice the right way. So going to uh, Ayanna Van Zant and um, Ebony K. Williams, they was having a conversation. Mm -hmm. I know you've seen the conversation where she asked her, would you date a bus driver? And she said, no, no. if he owned the bus, yeah. And that conversation, I've read so many comments. I was shocked on the comments because so many people disagreed with Ebony on, on, the, on that premise, right? Can you turn off your phone uh, on that premise? Um, um, and then I seen Ebony uh, on the Breakfast. morning show. Mm -hmm. Breakfast um, Club. Breakfast Club with um, Envy and, and Charlemagne yeah. and two other young ladies. I don't remember who they were right now. And, you know, they always kind of getting at her. And her thing was like, she didn't mean it as like that. She meant it more as guys got to st strive for excellence. People got to strive for excellence. People shouldn't be satisfied with B's, uh, D's and C's. Um, they always should go for excellence. And I Say what you mean <clears throat> and mean what you say. Mm -hmm. What you said was that you're not going to settle for someone that's mediocre. Mediocre. Those were your exact uh -huh. words. And... <laughs> What annoys me about people today, everybody does not want to be a millionaire. Some people are happy making $100,000, having their job. Look, a lot of bus drivers own homes, and they live decent lives. They live Yo, listen, more than home. decent check, lives. Check My stepfather, was he worked for the MTA for mad years mm -hmm. as a, a bus driver mechanic. You know what I mean? He fixes the bus, clean out the buses, and you know do everything on the bus. Him and my mom own four homes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right? I think to this day they own probably three, right? Um, my mom had several different businesses that he supported and helped her with along, along the way. And he was still the breadwinner, right? So coming from a, working at an a, a, a MTA a, as a bus driver doesn't mean that you can't be successful. But this is, but this is, and he but this put is all the kids to school. But this it. is where society has changed. I want you to think about when we were growing up. Bro, if you worked for the MTA, you were the man. If you worked for the post office, you were the man. Definitely. If you were... Work, if you worked in sanitation... If you had a job, you listen, were the man. If you worked in sanitation, you were the man. These days, the expectation is so unrealistic that if you are not a millionaire, a lot of women look at you like you're nothing. So check this out. So I had a friend of mine, and she had wrote on her page, she put that interview up, and she was like, yo, I don't know why people mad at her because of her standards. And I said to her, and I know her a little bit, so I asked, I said, what did you... And she loves her dad, right? So I said, what did your father do for a living? My father was a janitor. I said, he didn't give you the best and provide the best. She's like, yeah, but my dad always wanted more for me. I said, listen, I want more for my daughter. But I tell my daughter to be the best, ver better version of me. And I want her to find somebody. I want her to find somebody she equally yoked with. If she finds a rich dude that's going to treat her the right way, cool. I know what guys with money come with, right? I know what the kind of behavior come with. But if you can find somebody she can build with, 
I'm cool with that. As long a, as they gonna treat her right. As long as they got integrity. As long as they, long as they gonna love her the right way. As long as they gonna take care of their responsibilities, and she gonna take care of us. That's what's more important. A to great me. job does not make a great man. Man, and money doesn't make That's, a great person. No, money does not so make I a also, great man. And I also ask this question: If we, you know, she's like standards. So I'm like, yo, a millionaire is not a standard, right? No. So if I started going to every woman that I dated and go, yo, you know, I make six figures a year. Um, or some, some of our friends make seven figures a year. If I say, yo, you only making, you know, five figures a year or you making low six figures, I can't deal with you. That's a standard that I should judge a woman on or a woman should be. I don't have to judge. I think men are different, but I'm not judging by what money you make. But I want to know how you're going to treat me. How you gonna take? Is, how you gonna take care of me? Meaning the care part of care part of the relationship. How you gonna respect me as a man? You know what I'm saying? I care about that stuff. But that's part of the issue. I mean, the issue is so many women talk about you know the dating pool has pee in it, but you're measuring the value of a man with the wrong ruler, right? If your only standards is, is what that man makes. When you say, oh, but is he the owner? Okay. And if he was the owner, does that make him a good man? No. Does that mean he's going to treat you right? No. At the end of the day, just because a man makes more doesn't mean he's going to do more. Some people are selfish. That's the reality of the situation. And I'm just saying that women need to stop leading with this idea of what he makes means what he's worth. Right. What you make and what you're worth are two. What you make and what you're worth as a human being are two totally different, different things. things. Definitely. And I think it got to come down to money doesn't make the relationship. Be. Does money sometimes make things easier, but sometimes money makes you see who a person really is. And not only that, sometimes money complicate things. And I just tell a lot of women sometimes just being around a lot of successful people. I've seen people be very nasty with money. Course. You know what I mean? And they try to rule the situation or rule the household or tell you what you can't do and what you can do. And some women are into that, right? Some women are, uh, take that because they get what they want out of it. But I don't think nobody really wants to live that way. And, us, you and, know what I mean? And nowhere in what we're saying are we saying that she does not have the right to have whatever standards and, 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 and want whoever she wants. Um, my issue with her take on things was classifying these men who work these jobs is mediocre, right? Because that, that's my issue. And I want to say this, and she talked about the, the D's and the C's. So I got a friend, and I'm, I'm, I'll get him on the show one time, a good friend of mine, we, went to, we, uh, we grew up together. And you know, it's so funny. I ain't seen him in a couple of years, but when I knew him when we was kids, you know, he, he had got trouble, police got arrested, he'd been shot, you know what I'm saying? And you know, I remember seeing him a couple of years ago, maybe seven, eight years ago in the gym, and we caught, ran back into each other. I'm like, what's up, twin? What's, what's popping with you? And, you know, he got tattoos all over here, all down his arms. You know what I'm saying? I said, what you up to, man? He said, oh, nah, man, I'm a surgeon. I'm like, yo, get out of here. You ain't no surgeon. Like, <laughs> like, what do you mean you're a surgeon? Like, he was always in trouble. Like, we, and he, like, started opening his phone and showing me, like, doing surgery and all that stuff. He's like, damn. I said, twin, I didn't know you was that smart. He said, yo, bro, I passed with C's and B's, B. He said, as long as I pass the class. That's it. That's it. That didn't make my degree no different than anybody else's degree. And he said, I said, yo, you know how many kids don't know? I'm not saying that you got to strive for the C and the B and you can't get to the A. But a lot of dudes. I how, gotta... about, how about the people who, listen, the reality of the situation is everybody can't get A's, bro. Yeah. You understand? And, and this is my thing. If you rate a fish on its ability to fly or you rate a bird on its ability to swim, it's always going to think it's stupid. So at the end of the day, it goes back to everyone, you know, like she said, oh, I'm not going to deal with mediocrity. Everybody doesn't want to be a millionaire. You understand? Because to me, life, life is just about happiness. And if you're happy with your job that makes 80, 90 grand a year and you're happy with your one home, with your family, then bro, you're rich. You're successful. It is not up to anyone else to deem what is successful to another person. 100%. 100%. Um, well said. Let me ask you a quick question. What do you think are some of the things that make women selfish in your eyes? Like if you're dealing with a woman. Um, what makes a woman selfish? Anybody can feel free to answer that in the room. Hmm. Um, Self-centered, of course. Mm -hmm. um, a person that is not able to see outside of what they want. 
anything other than that. I think I, yeah. unappreciative. Oh, unappreciative, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Lack of gratitude. Um, women who um, only care about what they want. like, they mm-hmm. don't, they're not hearing nothing. You gotta say they don't care. They it's don't not care. even they hear. They don't even care. They hear um, what you have to say. I think a person who can't adapt to friends and family and make friends and family, or like you know, just make friends. There's some people that's just miserable that they got a problem with everything and everybody. You know what I'm saying? Um, those are the women that I try to stay away from. Somebody was just asking me about what do I think is selfish with what type of woman I wouldn't date and what is selfishness in a woman. For me, as far as uh, the traits that I, I definitely don't want type of woman I can't date, is two things, mm-hmm. selfish and disrespectful. That I can't deal with. Yeah, disrespectful. And dishonest. <laughs> and dishonest. You can deal with all? Now, now, <laughs> now, now, now and, Yo. And, and it's fun. And it's Yo, hold up. He said, he said the honest hole. Honest hole. I, 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 I can see that. You know, it's funny that you say that because, like, when you, when you said that question, the first thing that came to my mind is, what's a hoe? Mm, good thing. You know, and the reason being is because, and this is something I believe for quite some time, like, if a woman is single, she can't be faithful to herself. Because to me, what is a hoe? A hoe is a woman that's in a relationship that's still sleeping around with other men. If a woman is single and she's living her life, bro, what do I have to say? What can I say? She's single. She's free to do as she pleases. 100%. 100%. Shout out to, uh, I don't even know we shouting them out, but you know, RIP to Jerry Spring. I've seen that. Yo, bro, you about to shout out a dead man. Yeah, I, don't <laughs> know. This guy's I don't know. Crazy. I don't even know. Shout out. Yo, because he's I, always <laughs> mixing that up. You know that, right? Yo, you, 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 that's true, too. But I, I also don't know. Because Jerry Spring was like good to watch TV when you was when you had nothing to watch on TV when you stayed home from school. Jerry but he also in the black, in the, people, in black people too at the same time. Oh, I, I don't I don't know how to feel about Jerry Springer, but Jerry Springer was R.I.P. to Jerry Springer. The beginning man. of Ratchet TV. Bro. Yeah, it definitely was. R.I.P. to Jerry Springer. And don't this, forget Jenny Jones. And and and, oh, and one thing I want to uh, Ricky also, Lake. Oh, those those are talks. Those are good talks <laughs> back in the day, man. Um, Geraldo, all that. Yeah, it was good talk shows back in the days. Monty um, Hall. Wow. What about what about my man? Um, um, uh, uh, come on, what's my late night show? Uh, woo, 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 woo. Arsenio? Arsenio Hall. Yeah, man. We had good shows back in the days, man. Like good shows. Man. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, I seen this crazy thing before we get get out of here. I seen this crazy, crazy thing, and just to go back on the on the racism thing real quick. Um, I seen this thirty second clip. Mm-hmm. I saw it. Um, they had a t- they took a, a young a little black girl, and they put her like in the middle of the street, and people were just walking past no, her. Nobody, nobody checked on asked her. her, checked on her. Nobody and she asked was standing if she was there, alone. Yeah, if she was alone, who she waiting for? And then they took a a, a, a a little white girl, a Caucasian girl, and put her in the middle of the same, the same spot, and like 10, 15 people came over to. her. Like, hey, are you all right? Was your mom? And it just shows that how people just see us sometimes. And it's the way how we feel. People see us, but they don't even see us all at the same time. Mm-hmm. They just walk past. Uh, 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 what we go through, our situations that we go through, um, nobody cares. Nobody never seen us. So if you see us act a certain way or say why Black Lives Matter or we feel a certain way because we're never being seen. Um, people always tend to walk right past us, even though the problem is staring them right in the face. So, you know I me, mean? I just thought that was a crazy thing when I saw that. Uh, it, it made me sad. I'm like, damn, like, I knew the world is like that, but when you kind of see it sometime up close to person, like, who don't stop for a kid? Like, it's I don't like, care what color the kid is, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's a child there. But t- yeah, but that's, that's, the way, that's the way that the world sees our children, bro. Like, you know, even... Even these young black men, 15, 16 years old, and the police treat them like they grown men, beat them down like they grown men, bro, when these are just kids. Like, you think about Trayvon Martin, you know, that was shot down by George Zimmerman. Like, that was a child, bro. It was a kid, a child. You understand? Um, Michael Brown. Yeah, we, we, it's countless you, names, there's, there's, there's so many of them, and you watch these. What about that, that, young, that young black man not too long ago that um, accidentally went to the wrong house? Yeah, An and old guy, white man he just shot, shot. shot him. Shot, Twice. Shot, shot him in the arm. He <coughs> fell, then came out, and then shot him in the head. 14-year-old boy. Like, 
Yeah, it was crazy. Like, bro, come well, on. Look, man, man um, just the other day, the passing of um, the young, the, the lady, the white lady from. Um, oh, the one that, uh, the one that's pretty much Emma Till. Till. Yeah. Um, you know, in the Emma Till story, I might be talking about her, but the Emma Till, young man, you know, fourteen years old, castrated him, cut his ear, beat him senselessly. Uh, shot him in the face, I think, in the head, split his head open. It's just cr- it, 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 And it's like, so crazy the Jedi mind trick y'all play, man. Because y'all sit here and have tricked the world into believing that we're savages when white people have done the most savagery ever since the beginning of time, and y'all still do it. But yet, y'all turn around and play this game where we're the savages and we're the animals. and Yo, y'all look crazy, man. Yeah, man, like I said, it's a sad situation, man. Sometimes we want to be seen too, without having to be called all kind of animals. And, it's, and, and it, yeah, else. and it's it's not even just we want to be seen. Let's take it one step further. We want to be seen as human. Human. And that's that's it. And, and so so that's why yeah. that's why it's so easy for them to walk past that little girl without having any concern and, and for her crazy, safety. The, it's because she's not looked at as human. And, and the crazy part, we don't just not even want to be seen and treated as equals. We just want a fair share. We just want to be able to come to the table and, and be treated with the same love and kindness and respect, have the same opportunity. And, and we, we'll take it to where we got to take it to. That's all we, we want. And we are such a loving people, man. That's the crazy <laughs> nah, 100%, thing, man. man. That's the cr- that is our downfall. That that definitely is our downfall. I don't downfall. know if it's our downfall. It's, it is. I, 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 in the long run, it won't be our downfall. Because we are very... No, you're, you're absolutely right. Because we are so forgiving. Yo, bro, if they were in our place, they'd have, us, they'd have murdered all of us a long time ago. <laughs> well, look, you man, know that, right? Listen, man... Listen, I know man. you hate when the conversation goes. Yeah, here, yeah it goes too crazy. But uh, listen, man, this is another episode, episode of Brooklyn, Brooklyn Boys, Boys Radio, Radio, man. We love y'all. We respect y'all, man. Please like, share, and subscribe. And like, tell a friend. share, and subscribe. And tell a friend to tell, tell a, a friend. Tell a friend, man. Leave them comments, man. We love y'all. Until the next week, see y'all. Brooklyn. Oh, hold up. We What's Steezy? Tico! Yo, come on, son. How you not going to shout out the stack? Fuck Tico, man. <laughs> <laughs> he legendary. Yep. Yeah. Brooklyn, we out.